Hello people, let us continue our very discussion on the trigonometric equations. Last time I had started with a certain type of trigonometric equation which was looking something like this. Sin theta equals k where this k belongs to the range of the sine function which is this. Specifically, we did not take k to be 0 because for k equals 0, sin theta equals 0. This trigonometric equation's general solution we have already found out which is all integral multiples of pi. And that is why the question now is if apart from 0, any other value of the obtained outputs by sine function that is obtained. That means obviously 0 is one of the obtained outputs by the sine function. But apart from 0, there are many more obtained outputs by the sine function. Ranging from minus 1 to 1, there are infinitely many points which can be obtained as outputs by the sine function. So what if k output is obtained by sine theta or sine function? where k is non-zero but any other value among minus 1, 1 closed interval. Which are those thetas at which sine theta can be equal to k? This is the set which is known as the general solution of this trigonometric equation. So how did we proceed? We said that sine x from its principal domain which is minus pi by 2 pi by 2 closed interval to minus 1 1 closed interval is a bijective function. That means it's 1 1 and on 2 and because my k is lying in the range that is minus 1 1 here my k belongs that is why for every k inside this, there exists some alpha inside minus pi by 2 pi by 2 closed interval such that sign of alpha is that k. And because my k is lying in the range, that is why for k belonging to minus 1 1 closed interval, there exists alpha belonging to minus pi by 2 pi by 2 closed interval. And in fact, it will be a unique such alpha because there cannot be two arguments in the domain which are getting mapped to the same member because I am saying that the function is bijective. That means there will be a unique alpha which is mapping to the alphabet K. And so there exists unique single exactly one alpha belonging to minus pi by 2 pi by 2 closed interval such that sin of alpha equals k. Once I have obtained this, if I am having sin alpha is k and sin theta is equal to k, so sin theta equals k becomes, what does it become? It becomes sin theta equals sin alpha for some alpha belonging to the principal domain of sine which is minus pi by 2 pi by 2 closed interval. Okay? And therefore, finding general solution of sine theta equals k is same as finding general solution of sine theta equals sine alpha. So, what is our task then? The task is to find general solution of the trigonometric equation sin theta equals sin alpha. Now mind it in this particular trigonometric equation which is sin theta equals sin alpha, alpha is a fixed angle. Over here I am taking k to be a fixed output ranging in minus 1, 1 closed interval. 
and that is why corresponding to this fixed k i am asking which are all the possible values of theta at which the sine ratio is equal to this fixed k and because this fixed k inside the range is obtained at a fixed alpha inside the principal domain that is why when i am saying sin theta equals sin alpha here alpha is a fixed angle in the context what i am asking is if this is a fixed angle corresponding to which the sin ratio at this fixed angle is equal to a fixed alphabet k what are the possible values of the angle thetas at which the sine ratio will be same as the sine ratio of this fixed angle alpha which is k that means over here i am asking what are the possible values of theta at which sine ratio is same as sine alpha or sine ratio at alpha because alpha i am keeping as a fixed angle what i am varying is my theta so the solutions that you are going to get will be all the possible values of theta all the possible values of the unknown angle alpha is known alpha is known to me because k is known to me and corresponding to this k i have found this alpha such that sine ratio of this alpha is k what is unknown to me is these thetas and so in the solution basically when i am saying i need to find a solution of this trigonometric equation that means i need to find all possible values of theta such that sine ratio at those values of unknown angle theta come out to be equal to the sine ratio of the known angle alpha understand carefully what is known is alpha what are unknown are thetas so we need to find the value of the unknowns that means we need to find thetas this is what is our task so let's start from the very trigonometric equation if i consider sin theta equals to sin alpha where alpha is known theta is unknown i told you i can write this as sin theta minus sin alpha equals 0 and this because this resembles the very formula of sin c minus sin d which is what the formula is 2 sin c minus d by 2 cos c plus d by 2 just by the use of this formula over here i will be able to simplify my expression with a different sign into the product so let's do that here c is my theta and d is my alpha so sin c minus sin d standing for sin theta minus sin alpha happens to be 2 sin c minus d that means theta minus alpha by 2 cosine c plus d that means theta plus alpha by 2 equals 0 and when product of two expressions is 0 that means either this is 0 or this is 0 so this implies sin of theta minus alpha by 2 is 0 or cos of theta plus alpha by 2 is 0 and this is where the general solutions of certain trigonometric equations that we had dealt in the very first place come into play isn't this something like sin of an angle equals 0 isn't this something like cos of an angle coming out to be 0 which are the angles of whose sine ratio is always zero and which are the angles of whose cosine ratio is always zero do you remember this is nothing but the general solution of sine theta equals zero what is the general solution of sine theta equals zero 
That means which are the thetas for which the sine ratio is 0 is what I am asking. The thetas for which the sine ratio is 0 are nothing but all the integral multiples of pi. And that means if sine of this angle is 0, this angle has to be one of the integral multiples of pi. That's it because until and unless these angles are not integral multiples of pi, sine of an angle can never be 0. Sine of theta can only and only be 0 if that theta is an integral multiple of pi. So if sine of this angle is 0, this implies that theta minus alpha by 2 is an integral multiple of pi. By integral I mean this has to come from the collection of all integers or there is an or written over here you have cos of some angle is zero when can the cosine ratio of an angle be zero cos theta can be zero only and only for those angles which are having their terminal rays coincide with the y-axis remember but only and only those angles co terminal rays coincide with y axis which are odd multiples of pi by 2 and that is why cosine ratio of only odd multiples of pi by 2 is 0. So if cos of this angle is 0 this means that this angle has to be an odd multiple of pi by 2 that means it has to be 2n plus 1 pi by 2 for some n coming from integers. Understand carefully what did I do? In order to find out the general solution of sin theta equals sin alpha, I have made use of the general solution of sin theta equals 0 and cos theta equals 0. Because sin theta is 0 only at integral multiples of pi. So if sin of theta minus alpha by 2 is 0, that means theta minus alpha by 2 has to be some integral multiple of pi for sure. On the other hand, if I am saying cosine ratio of an angle is 0, I know cosine ratio of an angle can be 0 only when that angle is an odd multiple of pi by 2. So if cos of theta plus alpha by 2 is 0, this means theta plus alpha by 2 has to be, definitely has to be some odd multiple of pi by 2 for sure. And this is what we have obtained, the conditions and the look of the angles theta minus alpha by 2 and theta plus alpha by 2. Do not forget the aim. We are finding the values of thetas for which sin theta is equal to sin alpha. What are we finding? We are finding thetas. Do not get confused with theta and alpha two symbols over here in these expressions. We want theta in picture. So if I am having theta minus alpha by two is n pi, what is it that I can write on simplification? Theta minus alpha by two is n pi for n in the collection of all integers or theta plus alpha by 2 is equal to 2n plus 1 pi by 2 for n coming from the collection of all integers. Simplify this and simplify for theta because I want the look, the picture of theta. So what happens to theta? Theta happens to be 2n pi plus alpha. Just simplify this. Where your n is coming from the collection of all integers. Or, or else your theta can be 2n plus 1 into 2 into pi by 2. I just multiplied 2 over here. Minus alpha. Correct? this gets cancelled what you are left with is theta is equal to 2 in pi plus alpha or theta is equal to 2 n plus 1 pi minus alpha 
This is what we are getting on simplification. And what does this mean? This means theta is, what is this? 2n pi. Even multiples of pi are represented as 2n pi. So theta is even multiple of pi plus alpha or theta is odd multiples of pi minus alpha because 2n plus 1 into pi is nothing but odd multiples of pi. So theta is either even multiple of pi plus alpha or theta is odd multiple of pi minus alpha. How do I express this in compact form? Obviously, this is giving me an elaborative description about the values of theta which are standing as my answers to the trigonometric equation sin theta equals sin alpha. But we know for general solution, we need to compactify our set of solutions of trigonometric equations. How am I going to compactify this entire set of thetas which are either even multiples of pi plus alpha or odd multiples of pi minus alpha? Well, I can write this as theta if it is even multiple of pi plus alpha or odd multiple of pi minus alpha, this means theta is n pi plus minus 1 to the power n into alpha. Now, how did I write this and what is the guarantee that this is covering even multiples of pi plus alpha and odd multiples of pi minus alpha? Because when I explain you this particular expression, my n that I have written over here can be either even or odd. So when your n is even, what is it that I get? When your n is even, you get n pi. When your n is even, minus 1 to the power any even number gives you 1. So you get 1 into alpha, which is plus alpha and what you get is because n is even this gives you even multiple of pi plus alpha coinciding with this expression isn't it when i talk about n being odd what happens in this case you get odd multiples of pi that is n pi and minus 1 to the power any odd number gives you minus 1 so you get minus alpha and this is read as odd multiples of pi minus alpha covering this expression. And that is why in a compact form, I have written my values of thetas which stand as the values of the unknown angles which satisfy my trigonometric equation sine theta equals sine alpha or sine theta equals k. And if sine theta equals k is given, which are those thetas which are going to satisfy sine theta equals k? Or which are those angles at which the sine ratio is equal to k? Well, the angles are n pi plus alpha and n pi minus alpha, where alpha is one angle at which sine is k or sine ratio is k. Just find out one angle at which sine ratio is k and that is going to give you all the angles at which sine ratio is k and this happens to be your general solution for the trigonometric equation sine theta equals k where this k belongs to minus 1 1 closed interval. The general solution is n pi plus minus 1 to the power n alpha where your n